come up and say a few words, representing the mayor's office, Office of Constituent Services, E.D. Clay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I'll say a few words, man. Michael, thank you. Let's give Michael a round of applause again. I'm grateful for, good to see y'all later, man. I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to have us all join together on this particular day uh, for this particular cause. Uh, as Mike mentioned, my name is Greg Clay. I serve as the Executive Director of Constituent Services. And while Mayor Dickens could not be here uh, himself, uh, these are the types of things that he supports full throat. Full throttle. You know, when it comes to let's get this thing started. We have two dynamic speakers here today that will be sharing some information about mental health. And mental health is not all about just mental health. Mental health is being healthy mentally, physically, as well as spiritually. And we all need those aspects in life. <laughs> Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, this has been a long time coming, seven years. Seven years I've been thinking about how I can be a part of the solution. Seven years of therapy, starting back in 2016, and the opportunities that the city of Atlanta, uh, the director, the office, Mike Jones, shout out to uh, Kimberly Hampton. I want to start off with a quote. Langston Hughes once said, do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. And I used to think that was about getting money, uh, paying bills, getting what I want and getting what I needed. And those are all tangible things. What I didn't do was apply it to the other side. How can I get some intangible things like honesty, integrity, uh, things like that, that 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 transcends down to my kids. I didn't think about that, but I understood the hard work, the multiple jobs I got to pay the bills. But it was the things I needed inside was very important to add to me. So in 2016, after bumping my head and on against the wall, um, I started getting some help. And it was external help. It wasn't the help where I just thought that things were just going to go my way. You know, the, the things that um, not doing things, like not drinking too much, not fighting. So I was doing the not things, but I wasn't doing the things that would help me grow. So in 2016, and you need to understand this, that your opportunity and your turning points are going to come either by a whisper from the right person or by lightning. That's either incarceration or a car wreck or cancer or something bad. We no longer have to do that. So let me ask a quick question. How are you doing today? Very well, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? How are you doing today, young man? Well, today I'm powerful. I'm powerful today because I no longer need negative things to happen in my life for me to have my greater self. And that's one of the things that I've changed about my life is every day I'm trying to seek uh, one inch greater than I was yesterday. That's what I've been trying to do. And But I couldn't do leaps and bounds. I was doing the one inch thing until 2016 and I got a whisper. And the whisper says, you need some help, Paul. He told me to my face, he says, you need some help. And the next day I was in, no, within seven days, I had my own therapist and I was working through everything that has happened to me. See, mental health is made up of every piece. You good? All right. Yes, yes. Okay, mental health is like this. Imagine a big piece of pie and your thoughts are on this pie every day. You got a piece for your family, you got a piece for your money, you got a piece for your kids, you got a piece for your goals, you got a piece for your religion. You're thinking about that pie every day and it's bogging you down. I was in the Marine Corps 23 years and one of the things we used to do was field day. Field day is when you take everything in your room and you take it out. 
Then you clean the room and you clean everything that you took out and only put the clean things back in the room. That was every Thursday when I lived on base, but it was like for years, it was every Thursday we did that. But we don't do that in our life. We don't take everything that's in our life, assess it, clean it, and put it back. Or assess it and then get rid of it. See, we kind of treat our, our, our minds like when it's time to clean the leaves up in the yard. So you'll take a bag, and you and your brother, your cousins, your siblings, and you'll take the bag, and you'll hold the bag, and you'll throw some leaves in it. Then they'll get some more, they'll rake some more, and they'll throw some leaves in it. And then what do you do when that bag gets full? Anybody know what you do when that bag gets full? No, 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 no. You push it down. See, that's what we tend to do. We push it down. We know we can get more leaves in that bag if we push it down. What happens is that bag gets fuller, fuller, and fuller. And before you know it, you got a mess on your hands. You have an explosion that's about to happen. And normally for men, that we, I like to call it emotional constipation. Because now it's about to all come out. And then when it does come out, it shoots all over your families. And that's a bad thing. Because they don't know you're constipated. They don't know you've been pushing that bag down for years. And that's where you're at now. We are at a position right now that men's mental health is so important because the men are the core of changing this thing around. We are the missing pieces. Our, our, our rightful understanding about two things is how we feel and how we think. So when we align with how we feel and how we think, they're not the same thing. There's some things in life I hate, but I know in the right way that I must move forward for my family. So it's how I feel about things and what I think. And the thinking part is what keeps us moving forward because it's our job. We are the center, we are the core, and it's not gonna be right until it happens. So we need to do it, and I hate to say it, if we some old heads out here over 50, we might be able to make a couple of turns but in ideally, I'm talking to my grandsons and my sons to say that you've seen the mistakes we made. You've seen the issues we have. What I need you to do is to understand that all those pieces of your pies need to be addressed consistently and teach your children how to address their pies for each piece so it'll be great for everybody tomorrow. See. We're here today talking about what we want for tomorrow. And we're in charge of what's coming for tomorrow because we're standing right here today. So just know everything you do today is for tomorrow. So <clears throat> from, I want to thank everybody who came out. I want to thank the director. I want to thank Mike Jones because I remember when Mike Jones gave me the call. I am putting myself in a position that in on August 10th, on August 10th is my goal to have a, uh, a workshop for men, not just conversation, our interactive workshop, so we can get together, talk about the issues, very little, but work on the solutions. And we, first of all, we need to understand how to solve problems, not through anger, not through our fists, not through fighting, but work on some of those solving problem skills. So if you haven't seen my work, I'm on, uh, I have a negative to positive books uh, on dot com. I've written 15 books. I have a couple of books over there on my table. One of the great books is 75% Man. It talks about young men with trauma becoming dads, young men with trauma becoming husbands, what we can do about it, and how it affects the family. So you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me near Mike Jones. You can find me uh, almost everywhere. And I just want to happen to throw out there that I'm also a great photographer too. So that's <laughs> that's not my mango, but that's why I'm not wearing my camera today. But let me leave you with this. Waiting is to me 
is doing something positive while waiting for something to manifest. I've been waiting seven years since I had this first thought to get up and speak about men's mental health and it's finally taking place and it's happening right now. Thank you, Mike Jones. Our last and our final contributor to this day uh, is a friend and a brother. He is a counselor and a psychotherapist uh, at New Horizons Mental Health Center in Marietta, Georgia. And he comes to us as my own personal therapist. Uh, he has helped me engage one of the most difficult times in my life that uh, happened about a year ago. And so I've been with him uh, for the last six months. Uh, when I'm faithful, I, I see him. When I'm unfaithful, I don't see him. Uh, but when I feel like I need to see him, he always opens the door to me. And I want you to open the door to him and hear ye, my dear brother and friend, Dr. Percy Johnson. Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, that's a wonderful um, introduction, particularly coming from a, a man of Omega Sci-Fi. That's a, that was a wonderful <laughs> introduction. Um, and so I'm glad to be here with you all and glad to share with you all. And I appreciate my brother coming up um, and laying a foundation. Uh, I want to read to you the words of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He said, we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts we smile. And mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and on the mile. But let the world dream otherwise, we wear the mask. One of the things about the hurts and the traumas that have impacted us is that it fractures and shatters the way we understand ourselves, the way we want to present ourselves to the world, the way we want to be known. And most of the time, particularly African-American men, we have been made invisible. We have not been seen. And that we have to sometimes mute ourselves. We can't say what we want to say. We can't express ourselves the way that we want. And so we hold that energy or we hold that spirit. Or sometimes we smile and the pain is so deep that we don't know what to do with it. And finally, when we come around other people, we lash out because we grab anger, anger being a secondary emotion, not a primary emotion, the emotion that is deeper. We, we try to get away from, so what we do is we grab the emotion we can use and we project it at other people. I know you're saying, what in the world that, does that have to do with anything? And dealing with therapy and mental health Mental health is dealing with the emotions. Mental health is dealing with the feelings. Mental health is dealing with the constructs, how we make meaning, how we connect or don't connect with other people. And so sitting down and dealing with it helps us to understand why we do what we do or why we don't do what we desire to do or why we self-medicate. Uh, some of you have some wonderful techniques of self-medicating. Some of you all use shopping therapy to deal with the pain. You deal with the invisibility. Uh, some of you, you use uh, what we would call the left hand cigarette. That left hand cigarette that, that helps you. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you self-medicate. Some of us 
um, we go to these specialty clubs where we finally feel like, uh, you, you know, the kind where folk climb up holes and they drop stuff and shake it. That, those are what we call coping mechanism. Some of us just come in and we sit in front of a television. Some of us, now don't look at me too hard, we um, kind of use the um, food therapeutic approach uh, to try to deal with all of these emotions. Emotions being the body sending signals and the feelings being that the head is processing it through our experiences. And so when we talk about mental health, we begin to look deeper. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What's happening in my world? What's happening in my computer that is causing me to process the way that I am? Or what am I trying to avoid? Or what am I trying to cope or deal with? See, there are a lot of us, particularly African-American men, that don't understand that we have what is called epigenetic racial trauma. In other words, epigenetic racial trauma is that four to five generations held in a lot of the abuse, a lot of the victimization, a lot of the feelings and thoughts of helplessness. And what we understand is it impacts the DNA. Neurobiologists tell us that. And so it's in our chromosome. So when a trigger goes off or a situation or circumstances, sometimes we don't even understand it. What it does is it signals to the brain unconsciously, and then we start acting out. So part of it is, is understanding secondary trauma, what we understand to be anticipatory trauma. We understand what these signals are, and then we begin to help you understand why you're starting to feel uncomfortable. Why you can't attach to your mate. Why you feel like you need to push them away when they're trying to draw closer. What really is happening in many instances is you're getting uncomfortable because everybody else has abandoned you before. And so all of a sudden when somebody gets too close, you need to push them away because you know or you feel like or you think that they're gonna abandon you so you get rid of them before they get rid of you. I'm trying. I'm trying to talk good. Yeah. See, there are a lot of things that's happening. And then the, the worst part about it, my brother, is this. We got a generation, now two or three, that turned around and told us, don't catch feelings. So when I do start feeling something, I shut it down. I avoid it. I do a whole lot of things so that I don't feel so vulnerable in a relationship. And so a lot of us men, because we've been told, don't catch feelings. Oh yeah, we got sisters now that say don't catch feelings, because that make you weak. So what you do is, you turn around and you get hard. Or you use them before they use you. Or you begin to start saying, I ain't gonna trust nobody and nothing, because I've been hurt too many times. Psychotherapy, mental health, is a way of dealing with those deeper feelings, thoughts, and constructs. Many people will ask you, why is it that African Americans are so violent, particularly African American men? Where's my safe place? If I get vulnerable, we call it a double bind. If I get vulnerable to you, and then you turn around and tell me that's not manly, do you think I'm gonna share with you again? No. Oh, come on, sister, y'all know. I tell you something, and I say this and you say, I thought you were hard. I thought you was a thug. I thought you was a gangster. I thought you were. So then all of a sudden, I don't say nothing anymore. Then you get mad with me and say, why won't you share with me? Why won't you come and connect with me? Because you punked me the first time and I ain't going to let it go this time. What happens where I got to code switch so much? I got to be a hard thug brother on the block, but then when I go in the boardroom, I got to be an intellectual brother that can pull. How you deal with all that code switching? And what does it do to my mind? What does it do to my emotions? And what happens when I got to be, what, what's that word? Uh, that Dr. Slaughter, he was nice and kind. See, he was my professor at one time. Dr. Slaughter would say, uh, what does that mean, Johnson? I said, well, there's a fellow by the name of... Nietzsche, who talked about the Ubermanesh, a superman. 
What happens when I got to be a Superman at home? I got to be a Superman at the world. I got to be a Superman on the block. I got to be a Superman everywhere. You expect me to make all of the money. You expect me to do this. You expect me to do that. You demand that I do this. My children say I ain't this and everything else. What am I supposed to do with all of that stuff? When you tell me, oh, I need you to man up. There's one thing, and then I'm going to sit down and let y'all go ahead and eat. Listen to me. In one of the comic books, the comic book says that in one reality, Clark Kent never existed. Superman was on job 24-7. The comic book says that after a while, Superman went crazy. Because you can't be Superman 24-7. Mental health is about helping the Clark Kent come out in some of your relationships because Clark Kent can be human, the Superman. He's not vulnerable. He don't share. He rescues all the time. He's always on the job. He never gets any rest. He's just always running. Any brothers out here feel that way? Any brothers? Oh, uh, okay. I know there are some brothers who say, I got it all together. But there are some of us who get sick and tired of being Superman. I'm inviting you to connect with somebody who can truly hear you and allow you to be human in this world. Y'all put your hands together for Brother Johnson, Dr. Percy Johnson. We are about to bring this celebration to a conclusion. We want everybody to make sure that you get food. Uh, there are boxes that are prepared for you. And uh, we want to vacate this space because there's another group that is coming in. Uh, that has reserved this space and so I thank you all for coming uh, I appreciate what everyone has shared and I pray that you feel like I feel uh, as you leave this place I feel renewed uh, and revived as a result of hearing from our speakers uh, Brother Posey, put your hands together for Brother Posey <laughs> And for Dr. Johnson, put your hands together for Dr. Percy Johnson. Put your hands together real big for Brother Mike Jones, who did a lot of the heavy lifting to pull this thing together. And to DJ Device, give, give him a round of applause. DJ Device providing our ambiance, the ambiance of the day. Uh, to silence the shame, uh, to Oak Street Health, and uh, to the Veterans Administration that is present. Uh, to each of you, uh, Neg to Paz, uh, the, the Paul Posey's organization. To each of you and all of you, we thank you for your presence. Uh, we thank you for your spirit that you brought to this event. And we look forward to doing something like this again in the not too distant future uh, with your help and with the help of God Almighty. Let us prepare to leave this place.